So welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Namak APSC. So this is an initiative of Namak APSC to help students to prepare and study from home with the help of YouTube videos, current affairs available on the website, PDF materials for every subject and online tests to track your preparation. So do remember to visit namakapsc.com for more information. And in this particular session, we will be moving over to climate change. Since we have already done, since we have already discussed about pollution and the major sources of pollution, what are the different kinds of pollution, and since we have covered more or less every other aspect of pollution in general in brief, <laughs> so with this particular session, we will be moving over to climate change global warming and discussing more about climate change, global warming, what are the different causes, how is climate change going to affect us, what is global warming and what are some of the international or at least the most important international <coughs> initiative to combat climate change or global warming. So without wasting more time, let us start with climate change and global warming. Now again, I'm pretty sure everybody has some understanding of what climate change is. Now, climate change refers to any long-term alteration in the average weather patterns either globally or regionally. This means that climate change has obviously occurred many times in the Earth's history for many reasons. However, the changes in global temperature and weather pattern seen today are caused by human activity and climate change due to this human activity is happening much faster than the natural climate variations of the past. So, this climate change which is caused by human activities and is linked to emission of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane is actually crucial for us to understand how the climate of our planet is changing. These gases which I just mentioned that is the emission of greenhouse gases are effective at trapping heat from the sun's rays near the earth's surface much like how the glass walls of a greenhouse keep heat inside. Basically. The effect of greenhouse gases is nothing but to increase global temperatures and this is why climate change is sometimes called global warming as well. So climate change is what? Nothing but change in the climate patterns or alteration in the average weather patterns globally or regionally. When the climate of a certain region, uh, when the climate of a certain region changes over a period of time, we refer to, we refer to uh, we refer to it as climate change. However, this climate change is due to human activities and that is nothing but due to the emission of greenhouse gases which is resulting in global warming and this global warming is now leading to a climate change. Therefore, it is important for us to understand what is global warming so that we are able to understand how is this global warming causing climate change. So, what is global warming? Global warming is actually a phenomenon of climate change characterized by a general increase in average temperature of the earth which modifies the weather balances and ecosystems for a long time. It is directly linked to the increase of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere worsening the greenhouse effect. In fact, the average temperature of the planet has increased by 0 0.8 degree Celsius compared to, the, compared to the end of the 19th century and each of the last three decades as of 2020 has been warmer than all previous decades since the beginning of statistical surveys in 18. 50. Now, what the most pressing fact is that the most pressing issue is that at this pace of current carbon dioxide emissions, it is expected that there will be an increase of anywhere from 1.5 degrees Celsius 
to 5.03 degrees Celsius on an average by 2100. And if no action is taken, it would have harmful consequences to the humanity and the biosphere itself and major species and life forms on earth may go extinct. I have already discussed about Holocene extinction in one of the previous videos and this global warming is contributing to this Holocene extinction where many species will not be able to adapt to the changing climate like humans are able to and may lead to the extinction or the sixth mass extinction itself. Therefore, in order to combat in, in order to combat this global warming, it is important for us to understand what are the different causes, what are the main causes of global warming. So I'm sure you know what greenhouse effect is. So this greenhouse effect is nothing but a natural phenomenon. However, the increase in greenhouse gases is linked to human activities. Therefore, human activities are mostly the cause of global warming. So what is causing global warming? It is generally human activities. Now, of course, natural reasons can also be responsible for global warming. But the current pace of global warming is especially linked to human activities. So what are those human activities generally responsible for global warming, which is now due to nothing but release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere? One is fossil fuels. So the combustion of fossil fuels is a major cause of global warming as it produces carbon dioxide as well as nitrous oxide which are greenhouse gases and which are able to trap the sun's heat and is not allowing that heat to escape. That's what I have already explained. Second is deforestation. The exploitation of forests obviously has a major role in climate change. Trees help regulate climate by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When they are cut down, this positive effect is lost and the carbon stored in the trees are released into the atmosphere. Once again, carbon dioxide is nothing but your greenhouse gas. Third is intensive farming. Another cause of global warming is intensive farming where you also have livestock such as cattle and sheep which produce large amounts of methane when digesting their food and also fertilizers used in farming produce nitrous oxide emissions which are also greenhouse gases. These are major greenhouse gases which once again contribute to global warming. So farming, agricultural activities, livestock also cause global warming. Fourth is waste disposal. Waste management methods like landfills and incineration of waste landfills and incineration of waste emit greenhouse gases and toxic gases including methane that are released into the atmosphere, soil and waterways contributing to the increase of the greenhouse effect. Therefore, waste management, waste disposal is also responsible for global warming. Fifth is mining. Mining for metals and minerals are also responsible for the emission of lot of pollutants into the atmosphere resulting in air pollution and some of these pollutants are once again greenhouse gases which lead to global warming. And finally, we have overconsumption. So this overconsumption also plays a major role in climate change. In fact, it is responsible for the exploitation of natural resources and emissions from international freight transport which contributes to global warming. So overconsumption, human greed is also leading to global warming or you could actually say that human greed is one of the sole reasons for global warming because it is simply human activities which is now causing global warming. So if you have now understood what are the different causes of global warming, now it is important for us to understand what are the effects of global warming. So here we will be considering the different effects of global warming especially on biodiversity, oceans, humans and the effect of global warming on weather. So first is effect of global warming on biodiversity. Here you have to understand that the increase of temperatures and the climate upheavals 
disturb the ecosystems modify the conditions and cycles of plant reproduction the scarcity of resources and climate change are changing life habits and migratory cycles of animals therefore this is actually resulting in the disappearance of many species or the intrusion of invasive species because climate change is obviously changing the climate itself which is necessary for the inhabitation of certain species in the first place so this intrusion of invasive species can once again threaten crops and other animals therefore what i'm trying to say is that this global warming can affect the balance of biodiversity and when the balance of biodiversity is modified the biodiversity itself is threatened according to one of the reports of ipcc a 1.5 degree celsius average rise according to a report of ipcc the intergovernmental panel on uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change a 1.5 degree celsius average rise will put 20 to 30 percent of species at risk of extinction and this increase in temperature is nothing but due to human activities so if the planet warms by more than 2 degree celsius most ecosystems will struggle on our diverse planet therefore global warming can have disastrous effects on the entire planet itself next we will move on to how global warming affects the oceans now due to global warming permafrost and ice are melting massively at the poles thereby increasing the sea level at a rate never known before this will result in submergence of several islands and low lying coastal areas another concern is that there will be acidification of oceans as well a large number of a large amount of carbon dioxide can be captured by the oceans which will make them more acidic and therefore affecting marine biodiversity as well therefore there can be a tremendous effect which can be seen on oceans as well as well as marine diversity in our water bodies so this is effect of global warming on oceans next we move over to <coughs> the effect of global warming on humans now climate change is also affecting the global economy it is also resulting in scarcity of resources like food and energy giving rise to conflicts which will affect the social health and geopolitical balances in many parts of the world rising sea level as i've already mentioned due to the melting of glaciers rising sea level and floods are causing population migration and it is estimated that by 2050 by the year 2050 there will be 250 million 250 million climate refugees and this can also result in major changes and upheavals about the global balance about or, or the relationship between different nations nothing but due to global warming and many small island nations especially along the caribbean and the pacific ocean are at the verge of being submerged nothing but due to this rise in sea level caused due to global warming where this global warming is once again caused by nothing but human activities therefore it can have a disastrous effects on humans and the survival of humans itself finally one major effect of one another major effect of global warming is on weather so global warming affects weather and climate which will result in more droughts and heat waves more precipitations more natural disasters like floods hurricanes storms and wildfires so if the climate itself is going to change obviously the weather pattern can also change and these substantial changes to the weather can have or can lead to natural disasters which will once again affect biodiversity and these natural disasters can have a huge toll on human life on human property and also economic activity therefore climate change combating climate change is actually in the best interest of not only the planet but also sorry not only humans but also in the benefit of the entire planet itself 
So since we have already discussed the causes of global warming and the effects of global warming, now we will briefly look into how can we prevent global warming. Okay. So these are all very simple measures. These are simple measures where each and every person at an individual level can play a role in combating climate change and preventing global warming. So one is obviously renewable energies. So the first way to prevent climate change is to move away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy and cleaner sources of energy. So if you reduce the combustion of fossil fuels, the emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere can be brought down because emission of greenhouse gases is a major cause for global warming itself. And the combustion of fossil fuels is, 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 is one of the major sources of these greenhouse gases being released into the atmosphere. Therefore, it is important for us to consider renewable sources of energy rather than continuing to depend on fossil fuels for energy. Next is energy efficiency. See obviously if we are going to shift, if we are going to have a shift and if, if we are going to move away from fossil fuels, we will have to move towards renewable sources of energy. Therefore, we have to use clean energy and also reduce consumption of energy. There has to be increase in the efficiency of energy production and also efficiency in the use of energy so that we can completely rely on uh, renewable sources of energy rather than trying to you know kind of interdepend on both fossil fuels and renewable sources there has to be a shift the shift has to be permanent and we have to continue to rely only on renewable sources of energy next is sustainable transportation now sustainable transportation is necessary where we have to shift from internal combustion engine vehicles to battery and hydrogen vehicles as well as promote public transportation which is obviously known to everyone and is one of the most uh, viable ways of combating global warming and is also one of the steps which is promoted vehemently by uh, environmentalists and conservative activists conservation activists sorry it is public transportation then we have sustainable infrastructure. <clears throat> now, sustainable infrastructure, as I've already mentioned in the previous video, it is nothing but green buildings. So we have to opt for green buildings and low energy buildings, which will once again help save energy, cut down on pollution and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. If you have not already read about green buildings, I want you to please go back and read about green buildings, understand what is green buildings, how is it beneficial, how is it going to affect, uh, how is it going to help in combating climate change and global warming, what are the steps necessary, are there any policy measures to push for green buildings, what is Karnataka doing, what is India doing towards green buildings, how should construction activities actually change in order to combat climate change. Uh, then we can consider sustainable agriculture, sustainable agriculture and forest management. So agriculture, once again, as I've already mentioned, agricultural activities can also result in global warming. Therefore, there is a necessity for us to encourage the better use of natural resources, uh, stop massive deforestation and make agriculture more greener and include people in forest management, involve people in afforestation, increase forest carve, which is one of obviously one of the best ways in combating global warming. And finally, as I've already mentioned earlier, responsible consumption and recycling can also go a long way where following the three R's that is reduce, reuse and recycling can have major effects and can have great effects in combating and can be very useful in combating global warming and climate change. So this was nothing but a brief introduction, brief explanation as to what is climate change and what is Global warming, what are the different effects, causes and how can global warming be prevented. So these, I'm, I'm hoping that these points will obviously help you in your answer writing when it comes to your mains. So thank you for watching this video. If you do have any doubts, please do write to us in the comment section. Please do follow us for more such videos.